Hey everybody, Eric here with a random Sunday uh, book haul video. Uh, these are books that I got from Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble over the past few weeks, um, and and from other places. Things I got in the mail that I ordered from here and there. Uh, and I just figured, hey, what the hell? Let's uh, just do a video and show you some of the stuff that I've got. Some of this is brand new. Some of this is uh, older stuff that I picked up, and you're going to see me leaning over a lot because they're stacked up here, and uh, I guess that's it. We'll just get into it, and we'll start with, actually, this is the most recent thing that came in the mail. This is <laughs> Jurassic Christ by, who's it by? Michael Allen Rose, and this is from Perpetual Motion Machine publishing. Uh, it's a little tiny. It's supposed to be like a pocket Bible. And uh, if Perpetual Motion Machine puts out a book, I'm going to pick it up. This is about the second coming of Jesus. But uh, since time and space don't work the same for him as it does for normal people, he ends up in the Jurassic period, has to figure out how to get uh, where he needs to go. And it's, uh, it's a cute little book. And uh, I love that cover. I'm looking forward to reading this one. See? Already leaning over. All right. If you watched my interview with Jonathan Rabb, you've already seen this one. This is Behold the Undead of Dracula. Lurid Tales of Cinematic Gothic Horror. I love that cover. This is from Muzzle Land Press. Jonathan Rabb is the editor on this book. Another one. Do I need to keep saying I'm looking forward to it? Uh, I mean, I bought these, so I'm obviously looking forward to reading these. But, um, yeah, this one, I love those garish covers. Okay, now, we have the, the book that I just finished reading yesterday, Friday, maybe. Uh, I've already recorded a review. It'll be up eventually. This is The Night Stalker's by Christopher Triana and Ryan Harding from The Evil Cookie Publishing. And I don't want to say too much about this, because, again, like I said, I recorded a review already. But check out uh, check out that cover and then the back cover. You'll find out about this. Uh, eventually. Oh, I don't like the way those are stacking up. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's see. So far, all of these have been online purchases. I got this at or from Amazon. This is Alien Into Charybdis by Alex White. This is Titan Books hardback. I was surprised. Uh, got normal paperbacks. Alien Phalanx came out in an oversized paperback, trade paperback size. But uh, now apparently they're doing hardbacks. It's a hefty little tome, but uh, yeah, more more alien stuff, xenomorphs. Got this one from Amazon. This is a little older. This is from 2007. This is The Science of Stephen King by Lois H. Gresh and Robert Weinberg from Wiley, which I believe... They're one of the publishers of uh, some pop culture and philosophy stuff. Uh, this isn't to be confused with the new book, The Science of Stephen King, by uh, Meg Hoftel and Kelly Florence. Um, I do have some other books by these two. I have the science. They did a science of superheroes, science of supervillains. So I figured this would be a good one to have. Add to my collection I've already read. One science of Stephen King. Now I can read another one. I like this stuff. Um, all right. Playing Possum by Stephanie Rabig. However you say it. Uh, this is sort of companion to the Rue. Again, love that garish cover. And uh, killer animals. Love it. All righty. This is number nine in the Splatter Western series. 
Shadow of the Vulture by Regina Garza Mitchell. There you go. There she is. Um, let's see. I just posted a review for the second one, which I absolutely loved. I've read three of these so far. The first two, and then I want to say the sixth one. I jumped ahead because I wanted to read Red Station by Kenzie Jennings. But uh, we're up to number nine. And I know a few authors, quite a few authors, that are, are working on more of these. Can't wait. Love these covers. Been impressed with these books so far. All right. Now we're getting into a few from uh, Barnes & Noble. This is one. <clears throat> this is a book that I've already done in a book haul video. It's just a different copy. This is Star Wars from a certain point of view. And uh, I had the hardback when it came out. But a few years ago, I got rid of most of my Star Wars books. I kept the horror ones. And I kept uh, some Darth Maul ones. And uh, the hardback of this is one that I got rid of. But now there's a... A, uh, a new book for from a certain point of view for The Empire Strikes Back. And my nephew read this and told me that there's a Dr. Aphra story in here. And I absolutely love Dr. Aphra, one of my favorite characters from all of Star Wars. So I had to pick this up again. Uh, and then I'll wait when the paperback for The Empire Strikes Back one comes out. I'll get that. Um, but this is, for anyone who doesn't know, this is 40 stories that retell the original Star Wars, uh, what some people know as A New Hope, uh, tells that whole movie from different characters' perspectives. So, there you go. I didn't read it when I had the hardback. I'll definitely have to read it now, especially knowing that there's Dr. Afra in here. Alright, this book was recommended to me by regular viewer and commenter, Michael Booker. And this is Biased by Jennifer L. Eberhardt, Ph.D., uh, uncovering the hidden prejudice that shapes what we see, think, and do. Always interested in uh, good nonfiction. And apparently she's originally from Cleveland. So, yay, hometown-ish. Uh, but this seems really interesting. And I'm, def again, I'm just going to say I'm looking forward to digging into this um, and seeing what she has to say. And then I found this one at Barnes & Noble. This is Why Wakanda Matters. This is edited by Sheena C. Howard, Ph.D., and it says, What Black Panther Reveals About Psychology, Identity, and Communication. Um... <clears throat> so again, I like these sort of pop culture, culture, pop culture, philosophy, psychology, sociology kind of books. So hopefully um, this will be good. And it says a portion of proceeds from this book will benefit causes that support racial justice. So hopefully they're going to good places that'll use the money um, for good causes. And we're going to see some more Wakanda here shortly. Uh, let's see. Okay, some more. We'll finish up with stuff I got from Barnes & Noble. This is over a couple different trips. Then we're going to get back to some Amazon stuff. Uh, here's one found at Barnes & Noble. I was very surprised. This is Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh I've dug, I've only read a couple of his things. I can't believe how much he actually has. I'm shocked. Um, just looking at also by Stephen Graham Jones. That's a long list. And I think the first time I heard of him, at least the first time he registered, was when Mongrels came out. Uh, but he has just tons and tons of stuff. I'm going to have to catch up on all of it. So I was glad to find something else by him just sitting on the, the bookstore shelf. And then another one that I just, you know, now I'm trying to remember if I got this one at Barnes & Noble or if I found it at Half Price Books. Uh, this is an author I have not read yet, unless I've read some short stories 
in an anthology here or there, but this is A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. This is from This Is Horror, a great podcast, and a pretty good publisher. Uh, so it's a nice little book, maybe a, a good place to start with Josh Mallerman. I don't know. You know, starting small, just get a little taste. Uh, I want to get Bird Box, but I can't find... Nowadays, I'm having difficulty finding a copy of the book that isn't either a picture of Sandra Bullock, a picture from the movie that was made, or a copy that doesn't have the you know big giant circle on the cover that says, no, a Netflix movie. I may have to break down and get one of those. I think I'd rather have the little circle than a picture from the movie. But I'm still look. I'm still trying to find one that doesn't have either of those things, because that's my little pet peeve. But there you go, the house at the bottom of the lake, Josh Mallerman. And then uh, this is a new edition of an old book. It's originally from 2009, and this is the Little Sleep by Paul Tremblay. Um, I've read. One thing? Survivor Song? I think that's the only thing I've read by him. Again, except maybe some short stories. Um, there's another book, No Sleep Till Wonderland. Uh, they have a little picture of it there. I didn't see that. Don't know if it's out yet. A new edition. But this sounds pretty cool. It's about a narcoleptic private detective. So <laughs> that should be fun. And then this one. Oh. I didn't buy this at the store. I I uh, ordered this from Amazon. So I guess we're we're already back to the Amazon stuff. This is Black Panther: Tales of Wakanda, a groundbreaking anthology from the African diaspora, edited by Jesse L. Holland. Love that cover, the hardback. This is original fiction in the Marvel universe with uh, a lot of great authors, Maurice Brodus. Uh, I know I'm going to say this wrong. Tanana Rive Du uh, is in here. Harlan James, Alex Simmons, Glenn Paris, Kyoko M. Just to name a few, Linda D. Addison. 18 brand new stories featuring the King of Wakanda, his sister Shuri, the Dora Milaje, Eric Killmonger, and more. So, again, <laughs> looking forward to reading this. I love Black Panther. All right, then we have Pandemonium by Ryan Harding and Lucas Mangum from Death's Head Press. Crazy cover. Man, I just, I want to read all of these, like, right now. I just read, well, The Night Stalkers was also co-written by Ryan Harding. So I might wait a little bit before I jump into this. Um, although, oh, I seem to have forgotten some. Eh, what are you going to do? You're not going to see everything. But you are going to see Soul Survivor 2 by Zachary Ashford. Uh, and this is from Unnerving, and it's part of their Rewind or Die series. I reviewed Soul Survivor, liked it a lot, you know, creature, horror, animals killing people. So, we'll see how Soul Survivor 2 is. Then we have Slaves to Gravity by Wesley Southard and Summer Cannon. I recently reviewed Killer Chronicles by Summer Cannon. Uh, I enjoy her stuff. We'll see how well she pairs up with Wesley Southard. This is from Silver Shamrock. There you go. And then we have Survive With Me, a collection of survival stories. This is from Alien Agenda, edited by Kenneth W. Kane, is what that looks like. And all, pro all proceeds from the sales go to the support. Let me start that over. All proceeds from the sales go to support the American Indian College Fund. So another good cause. 
16, 16 Stories of Survival. We've got some great authors in here. Brian Moreland, John Everson, Summer Cannon again, Tim Wagoner, uh, Lucas Mangum again, Nate Kenyon, Hunter Shea, Real Yours, Brian Kirk. Just throwing some names out there. Seems like a great book. A lot of great authors. There you go. And now, some super giant big stuff. We'll start, we'll start with the smallest one. The smallest of the big stuff. Um, this is Robert E. Howard's Solomon Kane, The Original Marvel Years, Omnibus. So there you go. Big giant book. Thick. There's just some of the things, covers of the things that are reprinted in here. Uh, Solomon Kane is my favorite Robert E. Howard character, and this is just chock full of uh, old black and white stories, color comic books, um, just tons and tons of Solomon Kane goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, oh, I got to reach over there. Then we're getting a little bit bigger. Oof. This is Marvel Horror Lives Again Omnibus. Uh, I have the Marvel Horror Omnibus, which had characters like Scarecrow and It, I think is what it was called. Something like that. And I think Brother Voodoo is in there. And a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of Marvel Horror. This gives us uh, Blade, Satana, Lilith, Ulysses Bloodstone, Amphibian, the Wendigo... That was probably, I was surprised to see that this has uh, the Incredible Hulk 180 and 181, which uh, is the first appearance of Wolverine ever. He appears right at the very end of 180. Uh, most people, when they talk about his first appearance, talk about Hulk 181. That's in here. I didn't realize it, but it's a Wendigo story, so I should have known. Anyway, there's a giant book. Got a cool back cover. And then... All right. Oh, even bigger. The last one. I just got this. I'm worn out from picking up these big, heavy books. This is the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Deluxe Edition. Look at how big this thing is. It's huge. There's all the covers. Uh -huh. This is a little outdated now. It's from the 80s. And this was basically an encyclopedia of Marvel characters came out monthly as I you know again there's all the different covers I think it was 12 issues initially and then uh, they did like a book of the dead where they put out however many issues looks like five maybe that covered dead characters but it's uh, let's see if we can find a good page ooh there we go. There's a character I like. Two characters in a row. Ugh. So big and heavy. So it's, it's like this. And it gives you... Oof. There's stats. Real name. Occupation. Identity. Legal status. Former aliases. Place of birth. Marital status. First appearance. Etc. And then, you know, a big history of who they are and what they do. Um, and their powers and stuff, known superpowers, height, weight, eye color, hair color, unusual features, weapons, strength levels. Um, I had these, uh, at least the original series when it came out back in the 80s, and I'm excited to have this. Like I said, it's obviously outdated, but it'll be fun to go through and read this, Ugh, if I can hold it. And I actually... Uh, DC did the same thing. They have the who's who of the DC universe. I ordered that one directly from my comic book shop, and it's supposed to come in this Wednesday, as of this recording. Uh, April 14th is when I should have that. And the cool thing that DC did, the Marvel one was just like a comic book, but DC's came uh, shrink-wrapped, and the pages had three hole, three holes punched in. So you'd buy them like regular comic book issues, and you could put them in a three-ring binder, and then if they had any supplemental material, 
you could put them where they needed to go alphabetically. Whereas with the, the Marvel stuff, you know, when later issues came out, if they had stuff in the, uh, you know, the B's and the C's and the F's, well, you couldn't slot them in where they went because it was just a regular magazine. But I liked that DC gave you that ability to put them in a three ring binder and have keep everything in alphabetical order. But getting the giant omnibus of that on Wednesday, uh, again, outdated because that's from the 80s. But it's still very, very cool stuff. All right. So that's all I have to show you in this. Wow. Over 20 minutes. Man, I talk a lot. Anyway, uh, that's just some stuff I've gotten over the last few weeks. Um, and I look forward to reading all of it. Uh, so that's it. I just figured I'd do a random Sunday video. So what else is there to say? Um, please, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers, although I didn't review anything, so I don't know what we would spoil. Uh, but we can, comments are open for spoilers if you post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to follow me on other social media, my uh, Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of uh, books, comics, games, occasionally fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757. That's Eric with a K E R I K S M I T H 5757. And that's all I've got. So until next time, read more books.